Imagine waking up to a zombie apocalypse. Every single day, you're in a situation where you wonder whether you can even eat for the day. Except this isn't a hypothetical situation. Nearly 10% of the world's population lacks access to healthy and safe food. And with an exponentially growing population, this number won't get any lower. As such, it's important for us to take a step towards ensuring the food security for all by increasing the quantity and quality of the food produced, starting with the food we choose to cultivate. If a genetically modified spider can turn Peter Parker into Spider-Man, why not do the same for food? Genetically modifying food refers to transferring desired genes from one organism to another, whether they're plants, animals, or even microorganisms through genome editing technology like CRISPR. Once our examples, look no further than our local markets, primarily soybean and corn. Plants like Roundup Ready Soybean and MONA10 Maize taste better than their natural counterparts and are a lot better at withstanding Malaysia's notorious heat. Aside from taste and resilience, food can even be modified to resist pests and disease. For instance, in the Philippines, the Bt eggplant contains a gene transferred from the Bacillus thuringiensis bacterium, which produces a protein that's toxic for pests but safe for humans to eat. With genetic modification, our food is all but guaranteed to be of the highest quality. Granted, we plant it properly. Speaking of which, it's time to plant these babies. In more developed countries such as the US and Germany, the drastic evolution of artificial intelligence has been utilized and adapted into the agricultural sector to allow for more efficient planting and cultivation. Before planting, drones will identify areas with nutrition deficiencies and relay that information to farmers. After being planted, the crops are thoroughly monitored by AI systems with disease identification and image diagnosis. After that, the AI systems are also able to differentiate weeds and plants to allow for targeted application of water, fertilizers and pesticides. During harvesting, AI will detect the readiness of crops for harvest, and robotic arms will grab and sort the crops according to size and quality. From planting, monitoring, to harvesting, AI is more than capable of improving every single phase of agriculture to optimize yield from available land. But with all this cutting-edge tech, what if you're a small country with a lot of old buildings but not enough land for crops? Well, who said planting has to be done outdoors? Vertical farms are great for indoor spaces and repurposing abandoned industrial buildings. Using sensing circuits, the indoor environment can be adjusted to create the optimal conditions of light, temperature and humidity to create the highest quality plants. All good things come to an end, including good food. However, is there anything we can do to make sure it lasts longer? The answer to that is food packaging, which goes a long way in preserving food to be eaten later or transported. However, conventional food packaging is flawed as materials such as plastic are still permeable to water vapor and ambient gases. Alternatively, Local companies such as Nano Malaysia Berhad are working together with international organizations such as Foodie Box Group moving towards implementing nanotechnology into food packaging. Several elements are used in nanotechnology such as silver, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, each providing specialized benefits to the food packaging such as detecting microbial contamination, enhancing the bioavailability of nutrients and strengthening the mechanical barriers of the packaging. Nanotechnology in food packaging plays a significant role in delaying the decomposition of food and loss of nutrients leading to a longer shelf life. Instead of focusing on adding new things, what about we take a step back to see what we can deduct? I love me, and most likely, so do you, but maybe we shouldn't. The animal meat we consume contributes only 10% to our daily energy and less than half of our daily protein intake, with the rest being covered by plant-based foods. Meanwhile, meat production emits nearly 10 times as much greenhouse gases as plant production. And yet, a staggering 80% of the entire planet's farmland is used only for livestock. High global meat production won't be sustainable for much longer, especially for countries with unfavorable conditions for livestock. With that, countries ought to look into a focus on plant-based foods for their people. But how much of a difference would that really make? 38% of global land is used for agriculture, with 40 million square kilometers of that just for livestock. To put that into comparison, just by reducing global meat production by 50%, farmland equivalent to the total area of South America will become available, along with a 50% decrease in carbon emissions by the agriculture sector. While meat has its benefits like providing specific amino acids that plants don't have, it is an inefficient food source that takes a lot more than it gives. As such, lowering meat production to allow for more plant-based production will contribute to cost-effective and sustainable food production for the future. After hearing all about these countless solutions to ensure food security, a question arises. Why hasn't this already been done yet? Unfortunately, agriculture ministries are still hesitant to give out their current short-term strategies for these new solutions. Even if it isn't an apocalypse, then pollution and rising population that is expected to reach 10 billion by 2050 has given us a hard time limit. Sooner than we may think, there will be too many mouths to feed and too little resources to feed them. 
What we need now is to implement and advance this technology to ensure the quantity, quality and accessibility of food, along with the sustainability of food production for our future.